Hello everyone, today we're going to check out another framework used for video editing, it's called Matte Anyone. It's designed for background removal in videos. But what makes it different from just using regular background removal AI models, like we've done before, is that this framework bases its process on the first frame as the masking segmentation. As you can see on their project page, the method behind Matte Anyone is a memory-based framework for video matting. You give it a target segment mat in the first frame. Basically, the idea is to use the first frame of your input video and segment the object as the mask area. This framework will then follow that object through the entire video, essentially tracing and tracking its movement. For example, you can see in this video here how the first mapping of the object allows it to follow through the whole motion and movement of the character throughout the video. So, clearly based on their theory, it's more memory efficient to do the mapping this way instead of doing object segmentation and removing the background frame by frame, which would consume a lot more memory during processing compared to traditional methods. Plus, this one is capable of handling multiple objects. For instance, take this example, where we have multiple characters dancing on the screen we're still able to map and smoothly remove all those backgrounds while keeping the objects intact. The five characters remain clear, with even fine details like hair edges retained after removing the background. So now let's check out how we can apply this in our workflow in Comfy UI. All right, so first things first, we need to install these custom nodes. To start, we'll do a git clone of this custom node GitHub project link and press enter. As you can see, the folder has been created right here. We can click into it, and as you can see, everything's already downloaded. Once that's done, we go back to the command prompt window. Here, we navigate into the folder and run the pip install command. Since I'm using CUDA, I'll activate my CUDA Conda environment, and then we'll do the pip install in this environment. The requirements.txt file is already in this folder, so we can simply run the command pip install our requirements.txt and we're done with this step. Now we go back to the main Comfy UI folder, then we'll kickstart Comfy UI with the python main.py command. While starting up Comfy UI, you might as well make good use of the time and download the model files for this project. You can click this link. I'll also provide it in the video description. And you'll be redirected to the Hugging Face page. From there, click on the files version and download the AI model file, which is about 141 megabytes in size. Once downloaded, move this file into the Comfy UI Project GitHub folder under the Models subfolder. For example, I'll copy the file path and paste it here. And as you can see, it's already done. Now, going back here, we'll check if Comfy UI has started successfully. Scrolling up, you can see if the GitHub project we just installed shows up without any failure marks. If it does, great. Now, we can head over to the Comfy UI interface. Here, you'll see an empty diagram with a very basic default workflow. Let's delete that, and we'll load the Comfy UI workflow. One thing, if you notice missing nodes like in this example, it's probably because the interface was cached in your web browser before you installed the custom nodes. Even if the command prompt shows successful installation, you'll need to refresh your browser in this case. So, refresh your browser, and once you do, you should see the new custom node loaded successfully. This workflow comes by default in the GitHub project we just downloaded. Inside the folder, there's a subfolder called Workflow. You can drag the JSON file from there and load it into the Comfy UI interface and you'll get this workflow loaded. All right, let's try something with this setup and see how it works. The first step in using this workflow is loading the source video. For example, I have this clip of a character walking on the street side view and we're going to map the character as the masking object in the next step. One thing I've realized is that in the resize image node, the default settings from the GitHub project workflow file may give you dimensions that are too large. If you load a one minute reference video, you won't be able to process too many frames at the end of this workflow. So I suggest trimming down the width and height to get started. Let's say I'll set it to 1024 by 768. Then here, as you can see, we're getting the image from the batch index. That means we're loading all the frames from the video as an image list and passing that to the resize custom node. 
Once the resize node gets the video images, we'll grab only one index image from the batch. For example, we'll take the zero index, which is the first frame in this video reference. After that, we're basically just creating a mask for our reference. Just a quick note. For the models used to remove backgrounds, I prefer using the U2 Net General Purpose model over IS Net Animate. By default, this workflow uses Ice Net Animate, which is fine for cartoon videos, but for other types of footage, I'd recommend sticking with the general purpose model for better segmentation and background removal. Then, we extract the masked object with the background removed. Here. We're only working with one image for now. So let's say I'll cap the frame load at 200 frames and start processing. As you can see, the Matt Anyone custom node is loaded here. We're passing the resized video frames from our loaded video, but we aren't processing them yet. Instead, we're grabbing the mask output from the background removal. This is just one image, the first frame. Matt Anyone will handle the rest, processing all the background removal for us. There are some settings you can tweak. For example, whether you want to use green, blue, or red backgrounds, you can customize those settings as well. I'll leave them as default for now and see how it looks. Let's run it and see what happens. While it's loading, you'll notice it's passing the video frames and the mask really fast. Hmm. You can see some blurriness at the beginning of the frames due to masking issues. It didn't do a great job on the segmentation. But this isn't because of Matt Anyone. It's coming from the background removal process, converting the image into a mask. For instance, the first image here still has some objects remaining, so I'd suggest not using the default image remove background custom node or U2Net for background removal. Instead, I'd recommend tweaking the default workflow for better performance and leveraging Matt Anyone's full potential. What I'll do instead is use Segment Anything for masking, focusing specifically on the object in the first video frame. So, let's connect Segment Anything here with the SAM segmentation model and create a prompt for just the segmented character. We'll pass the output from Convert Mask to Image for user previewing and we'll also pass this mask into Matt Anyone for video processing. We'll bypass these custom nodes for now since U2Net isn't performing well. Instead, we'll use the first frame as an image and pass that to segment anything. Now you'll see the difference between using U2Net general purpose versus segment anything. Actually, I'll bypass this one too, just to keep it for comparison later. Then, we'll use this one for the mask preview, so we can compare side by side afterward. I'll put this preview at the bottom, so you can see the two mask differences and incomplete background removal. Again, it's not Matt anyone's fault. It's about how you remove the background in the first frame, which is the tricky part. Let's check it out. Okay, here's the second result after editing the masking method. First, we'll compare the two masking methods. The default workflow from the GitHub project uses U2Net general purpose for background removal in the first frame. You'll notice some objects are still remaining, especially around the camera carried by the character. The background removal isn't very clean, and parts of the camera remain attached to the character's body. On the other hand, when using segment anything, I'm able to retain sharp edges on the whole object. The camera in the first frame stays intact, and the character's entire body remains clear too. After processing with Matt Anyone, the whole video animation is much clearer, without any blurry effects from the first frame. I'll preview this individually so you can see how cleanly the whole character's body is cut out in the first frame. Meanwhile, this example shows the default workflow settings using U2Net for background removal. Sometimes I don't really prefer U2Net because it doesn't give a clear cut of what we want to remove, it's too general, and we can't pinpoint specific objects on the screen to remain as the mask area. So, when you download this custom node and load the default workflow from the folder, I'd suggest using a different background removal method rather than sticking with U2Net from the default settings. If you nail the background removal for the first frame, Matt Anyone will do a fantastic job on the rest of the video frames. 
that's how we can run this. Now, let's check out another example. The second example I'll use is this dancer on the screen. First, I'll use U2Net again following the default settings in this workflow. We'll pass the first frame here and do a side-by-side -side comparison later. Let's run this first and see how it looks. I'll bring this down here so we can see both masking methods side-by-side. The output from the default settings uses U2Net for background removal, which does a decent job of cutting out the character from the masking area, but there's still some lack of clarity around the hands and arms. If you're picky about video matting quality, you'll notice that when you preview this in full size, some edges of the building appear near the character's arm. This happens because the mask wasn't cleanly cut in that part of the hands. To fix that, I'll bring this video example down here and we'll look at another generation using segment anything. We'll focus just on the character for the masking segmentation. Then, we'll pass this mask as the object input for Matt Anyone's video masking. After clicking Generate, you'll see that both masks are different. First, Segment Anything gives a very clean cut for the whole hands, staying sharp on the mask regions in the first frame. On the other hand, U2, Net General Purpose, struggles with detailed parts of the body, like the hands. It's unclear how confident the model is about masking those areas. Meanwhile, Segment Anything stays sharp on the whole hand and it's finished loading. Now we'll compare side by side. This result is from U2 net masking. As you can see, even in the last part, there are some edges on the character that aren't very clear due to the mask affecting it. The most obvious issue is in the first frame where the edge of the building behind remains visible because the background wasn't fully removed. In contrast, with segment anything, we'll check out this result and go back to the first frame. You'll see the building on the character's shoulder is gone. Although the hand is a bit blurry, that's because the guy is moving really fast. After that, the whole object retains the character's movement without any background interference from the original video unlike the earlier example with U2Net, where we had building edges showing up on the side. If you have sharp eyes, you'll notice these issues pretty clearly. Overall, the performance is similar toward the end though. So far, this is what I've found using Matt Anyone. If you want good results, you need a solid mask for the first frame before processing background removal with Matt Anyone. It relies entirely on your first frame mask as input and automatically detects or traces the object's movement across the entire video for rendering. That's Matt Anyone for you. It looks pretty cool and should be useful for video editing and AI video generation. Comparing both methods right now, I can see one has sharper edges than the other, the one using U2Net for masking. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.